So in a previous video, we have talked about the cholera toxin. And cholera toxin is a bacterial toxin that causes diarrhea in the patient that it is infecting. So like cholera toxin, there is another toxin which is secreted by the bacteria, which is called hemolysine. Now, as the name suggests, hemolysine, the, the word hemo, it refers to something related to RBCs. So hemolysines are toxins. These are also bacterial toxins. And they are specifically secreted by some streptococcus species. So hemolysine, what they do, they are secreted by the bacteri bacteria streptococcus and they lyse the RBC. So lysing of RBCs. Now, while we are checking the effect of hemolysine or the effect of hemolysis on eukaryotic cells, we generally tend to make an agar plate. We generally tend to make an agar plate and we use the agar, which is of a special kind, which is called blood agar. So blood agar is nothing but you mix 5% of sheep blood with the normal agar medium that you make in your lab. So that makes uh, the blood agar. Now, there can be different kinds of hemolysis. So the first kind, if you're streaking, if you're streaking bacteria on the agar plate, and after the bacteria grow, then you see that there is a greenish, there is a greenish color on the line of the streak. Or maybe around the line of the streak. If there is a greenish color, then we call it as alpha hemolysis now this greenish color how does it come so the bacteria that causes alpha hemolysis they produce hydrogen peroxide and this hydrogen peroxide it uh, reacts with the hemoglobin it reacts with the hemoglobin thereby producing an oxidized form or oxidized derivative of hemoglobin, which is called methemoglobin. And this methemoglobin gives the greenish color. So this is alpha hemolysis. Now, in some cases, you're going to see the line of streak, the bacteria that you have streaked on the agar plate, on the blood agar, there would be complete transparency on that agar plate. So complete transparency. Complete transparency on the blood agar. So when there is complete transparency of the blood agar, we tend to infer that this species of bacteria this is done a complete lysis. So the complete lysis, we call it the beta hemolysis. So there would be complete transparency or uh, the agar would have an yellow color, lightened yellow color. So we are going to call that beta hemolysis. Now, another situation can happen. When you strick it and the bacteria grows, um, there won't be any change on the agar plate. No change. Now, when there is no change of the agar plate, we call that bacteria to be gamma hemolytic or the hemolysis to be gamma hemolysis. Right. So, once again, 
when there is a greenish color, it is because the hydrogen peroxide released by the bacteria is reacting with hemoglobin of the RBC and it is forming the methemoglobin, which is giving that green color, and we are calling it the alpha hemolysis. Now, in case of complete transparency, when there is a light yellow color or complete transparency of the blood agar, we call it the beta hemolysis. In this case, the red blood cells have completely been lysed. And when there is no change, that, that is, uh, there is no hemolysis, we tend to give it a name of gamma hemolysis. Now, for alpha hemolysis, the example would be streptococcus pneumoniae. For beta hemolysis, there are a lot of examples of beta hemolysis, even uh, staphylococcus, um, they are also um, weakly beta hemolytic, but not as hemolytic as the streptococcus species. So the streptococcus species which are beta hemolytic, one of them is streptococcus um, pyogenes. So this is beta hemolytic. And... Uh, Gamma hemolytic are those which are not having any hemolytic effect. For example, Enterococcus faecalis. So these are the examples of the different kinds of hemolytic bacteria. So that concludes this video. Hope you like it, give it a thumbs up if you like it and share with anyone who would need to know this. Thank you.